Today we are going to use Autodesk Sketchbook to create some line work. So we're going to start examining the tools for symmetry in order to create some examples like this. We will be creating mandalas. And a lot of us have seen mandalas in um, adult coloring books, in on phone cases, or your laptop cases, but mandalas are a lot more than a decorative feature. They are rooted within a spiritual practice in the Hinduism and Buddhist religions. So I'm going to share with you some things about how mandalas were originally created. They used to be made out of crushed up stones and gems, but today it's mostly crushed up marble. And you can see that they're ground up into a sand consistency. And these copper funnels will, they have these grooves on them. And while the vibrations are on them, only a little couple pieces of sand will come out at a time. And the idea is to create a design a design that has symbols and colors that relate to a particular intention. So that while the monks are creating the mandala, they are meditating and putting themselves into a spiritual trance. The idea is to invoke a presence, a healing power. Throughout this activity, they're focusing on an intention and each person that's watching the experience is giving a blessing as each grain of sand is added to the design. The idea is to develop your mind's potential and to transform your mind. So at the end, the actual mandala is destroyed. It's the idea of impermanence, that nothing lasts forever, and that process is more important than our final product. And so the most important part of creating mandala is creating an offering and having a focus and an intention to create a better world. We are going to take a look at some mandalas for their shapes, lines, and patterns to inspire your designs. Before this assignment, we worked with Zentangles and filled up a page with all kinds of designs. So now let's take a look at some line mandalas that might inspire you as you create your artwork. Now let's see how we can create this symmetrical artwork using Autodesk Sketchbook. Welcome back you guys. Today we are going to explore symmetry by creating a mandala in Autodesk Sketchbook. So the objective for us today is to learn how to create a clean and simple line work using Autodesk Sketchbook. In this lesson, you guys will start to understand how to incorporate symmetry, mirroring, transform layers and fill in order to make your unique design. Now first let's get to setting up. So up here we start to change to go to new sketch. This is where we start to put those size restraints. If you've got this locked, you're not going to be able to change one or the other. It's going to keep sort of a ratio. So I'm unlocking it and I'm going to have it at 2400 by 2400 to create a really nice square here. So remember you can zoom in and out to start to see. Now we're gonna be using a lot of these tools at the top and exploring mostly the symmetry tool right here. So when we're using the symmetry tool, all of these other tools, if it's blue, it's on. If it's white, it's off. So right now nothing is on. Right now the sim Y symmetry is on. And so let's check out what the Y symmetry does. So Y is going to show us that it's basically mirroring left and right side. So in between each of these, I'm gonna go here and clear it out so we can start to see. So Y is the left and right side. If I turn that off and I turn the X symmetry on, you're gonna see that it does the top and bottom sides. Now I'm gonna clear that out. And if I turn both of these on, 
you could see that we're doing both sides coming in from this corner. So we've got the left and the right mirroring and the top and the bottom at the same time. So that could create an interesting design. Uh, what we're also going to look at is if I turn this off, let's go back to our predictive stroke and see how this adjusts our design. So if I don't have predictive stroke and I try to do something here, you could see that if I make a little mistake, let's get back, if I make a little mistake, we start to see all of those issues here. But if I turn this off and I bring it up a little bit more, it starts to fix and make those lines a little bit smoother. Let's try it again. Check it out again. Let's turn it all the way up. Predictive stroke is going to tell the computer when we want to make a circle. It's going to tell the computer when we want to make a straight line. It's going to just keep things really nice for you. I'm going to do the squiggly line and see what happens. You can see that it starts to perfect it for you. So depending on your style, you might want this to be up or down. I like to keep it somewhere in the middle. Okay, so exploring the symmetry a little bit further. Like I showed you, we got the y-axis, the x-axis. Now let's look at how this radial is different. So it gives you this option of sections here. So if I move this up, we have a lot of sections. If I move it down, we have a little bit less. I think if you get too many, it gets a little confusing. So eight sections is about a good amount of sections to work with for your mandala. And the radial, it allows us to also use this lock and unlock. So if you want your mandala to be right in the center, that's fine. And as long as it's unlocked, you can take it from the center piece and move it down into the corner. If maybe you want to do a little detail that moves out. Or this upper part. Either way, wherever you want to place your mandala, when you've got it set up, go ahead and lock it. Now the eye turns this grid here on and off. So if you don't want to see the lines or you don't want to see the lines, I like to see the lines. It gives me a nice idea of where to start it. This right here is called the extender button. So if you've got it on, it keeps the strokes within your guidelines. And if we turn it off, then your guides can go in between those guidelines. So really depending on what it is that you want, if let's say you want to do something more geometric and keep those sections straight without interfering with each other, that feature is nice. But if you really want to start to allow them to interact. That's also something you could try out. Now let's see how the radial is different if I bring this down to four sections. Now it looks a lot like when I turned the X and the Y on. So if I keep the radial at four sections, how is it different from the X and the Y. All right. Now the radial has balanced that out that way. Let's do the same design to show you how they are different. So if I'm in my right box and I just do a little thing like that, that's how it works with the radial. And now I'm going to try it over here. You can see that because it's doing the mirroring at the top and the bottom and the left and the right, it's less focused on 
the center mirroring. When you start from the radial, it mirrors it from the center out. When you do the others, it's mirroring top, bottom, left, right. So depending on your idea, this can help or it cannot help. Now look, I have X and Y on. I cannot change it into more sections. Those have to be off and the radial allows us to change from those sections. Now what I like to do is work with the radial and I like to have an odd number of sections. And then what I also want to show you is how using different layers is gonna allow you to have much more capability. So let's say in my first layer, I wanna create a little flower pattern in the center. And then I want to, in another layer, experiment with some circles around that. And I'm even going to create another layer for some uh, leaf patterns. I'm going to turn off predictive stroke, get back to my right layer, and I'm going to create, let's just say I'm doing like a little leaf pattern here. Now, I could see that some of it's coming off and on, and I don't really like how it looks. I'm gonna come over here, and because it's in a separate layer now, I can start to make some adjustments with just this, just this particular layer. So what if I do something like transform, and now I can either bring them in closer, I could bring them even further out. You could see that Having it in a separate layer really allows me to have some flexibility with that. Now your transform tool can also be used for some design work. So on my new layer, I'm gonna go back over here to my symmetry, turn that back on, and I'm gonna make a design that's, uh, let's just say I wanna do something like this, right? Now I've created this line and it's all throughout here, but what if I want to mirror that on the other side? I can take this layer and duplicate it. So now I've got two of them. And now I can go to the transform tool. And also, because that layer is selected, start to create a second one. Or maybe I like how that one flips. Ooh, that one turns out pretty cool. And as the transform tool is still connected, I can kind of start to move things around. So it could add some interesting effects to your design if you try it out that way in using your mirroring as well. Just remember to always do these things on different layers so that you can adjust things and have a little bit more flexibility as you are creating your design. As a reminder, if you were ever lost, maybe I started to draw in here again and I'm like, what's going on? It's not mirroring it. Remember that if you, and I just wanna clear some of this stuff out. If you ever want to come back into here, you've got to click your tools back on and make sure that they're blue or else nothing else is really going to happen for you. So my final advice is to play around with some of these tools. As you start building a design, I wanna see you take, start to draw some larger shapes. First. And then you can go back, and if you ever make some mistakes, remember the three finger rule where we go backwards. So make your bigger shapes first for your design and then go back in and add some details and keep adding on. 
Remember that your layers allow you to have more flexibility. We're gonna keep these designs completely line first, and then in my next video, I'm gonna show you how to start to fill your line work. Just make sure you've got your separate features on separate layers over here, and then we will add some color features to your mandalas at the end.